live from Ghana. A legend. A legend of hip life. Reggie Rockstone. I'm a DJ, Rab the International Bakery. And we got Reggie Rockstone on here, also known as Reginald Yao Asante Ose. And we're going to give you some history on the development of hip life. Mm -hmm. So I can just start off real quick. Um, we coined the term from hip life. from hip hop, hip hop and life from high life. life. Just to represent uh, the music scene, which is called the popular music of Ghana and the emerging popular music of the, the world, actually. I don't even want to say the United hip -hop. States. Yeah, hip hop. And um, what's the, how do you explain the development of that? Oh man, so we, we came home in 93, 94, um, after our, our stay in the West, or Bruni, like, you know, it was over at the, on the other side. We were both doing good stuff, you know. My man, my mellow, he was on his hip hop proper, you name it, from all the elements. From well, graffiti. All in purpose, intense and purpose because of the generation we were born in. Yes. We were B boys. We were connoisseurs of the genre that Break, the Breakdowns are official. Yeah, the, the genre that they dealt with is hip hop. Yeah. So, yeah, we know funk, we know soul, we know jazz, we know we know all that good music. We knew high life too. Yep. But our thing that we claimed as our own as teenagers in, in the late 70s, 70s and early, yeah. in the early 80s hip -hop. was hip hop. Yeah. But when we came back to Ghana, that term high life became a broad sense of just general Ghanaian music. Yeah. Because high life really started, started in the 40s in the, yeah. with the big bands and all that. And they, they, you know, if you know, if you know the history yeah. of how the very words high life came about, you know what I mean. You, you, you Google that, check that out. Yeah. So we come home now. Originally, uh, I came home for Panafest. My, my brother was already in the cut. You know, yeah. I mean, he on he on this. So you know, we clicked up and started to build. Give us some history on the development of hip life. We looked at it two ways. Mm -hmm. Cultural nuances and languages mm -hmm. and rhythms, and between that, too. So, we can either do the hip hop rhythms mm -hmm. or cultural idioms and languages and nuances, usually violingo, yeah, or we can do the reverse, yeah, yeah, where we take the beat is more uh Ghanaian and the and language, the is, language is, is, is a hip hop, yeah, related audience, black, uh, black. coming up and bra yeah, and bragging and all that stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Kriegelish. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever, uh, whatever we say it is, is what it is. <laughs> you can't argue with us. <laughs> How did the UK black music scene influence your style, Reggie Rockstone? Oh, man. Amazing. Probably the Jamaicans, the, right? The, the Jamaicans that look like we, we got the We got the Jamaicans, you know, we had men them. Um, a lot too. of my friends, yeah. a lot of my friends Jamaican. Um, but if you think about it for what it really is, my whole musical career was really jump started by an uh, English dude. Before y'all came, before we came home, doing this hip life thing, DJ Pogo. Yeah, so it was hip hop. It was hip hop. Yeah. That's it. But yes, um, I was definitely um, very, very much aware of the Jamaican influences. But what do I, they mean by the UK black music scene? Black people always been in the UK. Yeah, but so they, 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 talk, they talking about hip hop. Really? So yeah, black, black people wasn't doing nothing before? Yeah, they had stuff over the, there. They had ska. The early they had 80s. Ska, yeah. reggae, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? But hip hop definitely got a strong look at my folks. The uh, London Posse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Cupmaster Swift. Also, uh, can you uh, you're naming, MC Mello. Uh, so you're naming names that. Simone, Moni Love. Can you say they influenced you or they were just your peers? No, peers. Yeah, peers. Yeah, that's peers. what I'm saying. It's like not but, influence. But, yeah. but when you say, no, but on that note, the the, the the Jamaican culture thing, you know, they they got their own vibe, yeah. you know, because I was much aware. I mean, when I'm in New York, I know, I, you know, remember Red Parrot and all, you know, yeah. dance dance hall, yeah. you know, what we what they used to call raga, okay. In 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 the UK, I I experienced a whole vibe. Yeah. Then you went to Soul to Soul, Jazz to be in them. Yeah, you, you feel me? Uh, they had like a whole collective sense. Dude, let me let me Sound tell you this. Let me tell you this. You know you know the whole neo uh, neo soul sound. Yeah. I heard that in in the UK way before America got up yeah. on there. 
I, I knew sisters was rap, rapping their hair with backpacks and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, the Roots, Black Thought and them, they lived in the UK for a long time. Or they, or they hung out there. Erica Badu, Maxwell, you know what I'm saying? They all passed through. So, so he's I'm asking very, a specific question though. How did it influence your style? Um, I can't, Minimally? I can't point, but yeah. like, you know what I mean? Because I'm listening to folks like, uh, it's nothing like this. What's his name? My man, um, I can't remember his name. His parents moved here, you know. Um, but you, they, you know the song, you know, Jazz of being them, um, you know, all it was a whole collage of different vibes. Trevor so, Nelson, Trip, nah, he, he radio folks, that's okay, radio folks, okay. but I've known him before, you know. So, for me, I suspect that they definitely must have had some type of. You know, look at the rare grooves. Yeah. You know what I mean? They had that on lock. Yeah. You know, now I hear people sampling uh, uh, okay. all that stuff, you know. So, yeah. So, definitely, you know, British New Yorker. <laughs> so, yeah. what are your thoughts on how music connects the African diaspora? African diaspora could be a Zimbabwe yeah, that, person that's, left Zimbabwe living in London. It could be someone why. separated by 400 years of um, sla yeah. transatlantic yeah. slave trade. Yeah. Their diaspora could be anything. Yeah. You know? Hey. But how does the music connect everybody? Oh, music connects everybody, period. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Music connects everybody, period. Does the popularity of Afrobeats in the Caribbean and reggae dance hall in the Ghanaian Africa gives us, gives us the opportunity to create music industry that doesn't rely on a Western industry? Like, now can we live in our own? Yeah, we, but, we're a little bit more independent than we, we could, we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I suspect they're still pulling the strings. I said we we we're not totally in control. You yeah, feel me? Yeah, yeah. They don't. They tried it. But the great thing is, we coded now. You see, unlike back in the day where you know a bunch of uh, culture vulture crackers get in the room and say, okay, we're gonna exploit this. They don't know how to control the Afro beat because it's coded. It comes yeah. with a whole vibe. Yeah. You. It's one of them. You, it's hard to emulate. You can't bite that shit. Look what they tried to do with Davido, didn't they? They tried to sign him to yeah. or whatever. They didn't know what to do with him because yeah. we responded different. We know. And the formula is simple, but it's coded. They're always you comparing know? us to the island of Jamaica I, and their thank music. You. But thank you, but it's different. Yeah. You know? Sometimes we, we drop a beat and say but two words, but we boogie. We on it. And you feel the pulse. And and it's, 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 it's a universal pulse. So don't play with these Africans, man. Don't play with us. What you are know? your thoughts on the year of return to Ghana? The year of return to Ghana is probably the flyest thing since part of Fufu. A market, marketing package. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, you know people I mean? been coming here before you and I were born. But, but yes, I yeah. mean, my mother, my yeah. mother, was, you know, Millie and them, they were some of the first. You know, my father, you know, my mother, African-American, my mother, Ashanti. But yeah, return know. mean more than that. Oh, Your return yeah. could be a guy named well, 53 that is, lived, lived, but, but lived Rab, 40 years out of the country. Rab, remember what me and you used to talk about? The romanticizing of Africa. Okay. We used to talk about this shit all the time, man. It's like when you talk about Israel, you you know, people feel like, biblical oh, terms. yeah, you biblical know, proportions. Biblical. They feel like people, people still on donkeys and shit. Yeah, they yeah. got rappers, everything over there. Yeah. You know, and so, but it's cute though. I mean, it's Kwame Krumah should be smiling there, yeah. you know. Yeah. We are we are linking up, and and it's it's most necessary. So um, I ain't mad. Plus, okay. You know we yeah. we can make we can make we can make some um we can make that tourist thing work too. How can black music artists from the United Kingdom connect with Ghanaian music scene? I think that's they already happening already. They're already connected. Because someone one of their parents is from yeah. Uh, West Africa, West Africa. It's not even like East Africa or Southern Africa. He's we, always we, like Nigeria, we, Ghana, we Sierra Leone, care, Gambia. That's what we did. We took yeah. care of that. Hip oh, the, life was the bridge. Oh, the tri-continental. Tri-continental. Tri North America, Africa, Africa Europe. Europe. Yeah. Tri-continental. Me and my brother here did that. You know, that's the blueprint. But now it's manifesting. Now how can it connect? He's asking, like, how can it connect? You, you're a, saying it happened already. Yes, yeah, so they're already connected. So through family ties. Family ties. Most of these big artists in in the UK, most of them African. Family ties. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Most of them African. You know, yeah. if they're not Ghanaian, they Nigerian. How yeah. connected are the music scenes across West Africa as a whole? 
I think I, I think it, it's uneven. It's yes because Be, because you know you've been playing me stuff and I'm like yo who yeah. that? No, he said across he said across West Africa then Africa yeah. because I give you the example. French colonized African nations. Mm -hmm. They seem to interact with each other, although they different languages. The, and the francophone. Groups. So someone from Congo can talk to someone from Senegal. Yeah. Two different cultures, two different ethnic groups, two different histories mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't. Liberia. They speak English. Yeah. And I, I don't know. hear Liberian music banging on the level in Ghana. No. As much as Ghanaian music bangs in Liberia. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Even to the extent where Ghanaian music is not really banging in Nigeria. Well, you so know, it's, it's, it's that, lopsided, that, that's, it's heavy handed. That's, yeah. a, that's a whole nother show. Oh, that's like a big brother. That's a whole nother show. Yeah. yeah. You know, because, you know, we've been had, I mean, Nigeria definitely respects Ghana when it comes to that music thing, you know? Yeah. But, you know. Most of the countries do. Gambia, all yeah, of them, but yeah. You, but then Rav, check the demographics, though. You know what I mean, they, it's huge back then. But it's not connected though. No, it's not. I'm just saying, like, I can't, I can't, I can't pick a, a local Ghanaian and say, give me the top five out of Gambia. They could probably give me the top five in Nigeria, but like you said, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> but they can't that's, give that's, me. That's, but that's, a Gambian yeah. can give me the top, top five, five of Ghana, of Ghana, and, and, and Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. So it's we, a, it's we, dis, disproportionate. We we on it. Is that the English word? <laughs> we dis, working on it. Disproportionate. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I had to take the label off this. You know, I'm not trying to advertise for nobody. The next one. Is there conflict between hip life and Afro beats? Or are they essentially the same thing? You can dig okay, into that. Okay, let me, let me start this off. I was talking to some Nigerian brothers and sisters, Isn't right? Isn't hip life birth? Yeah, I'm okay. coming. I'm about to go there. Because, you know, they, yeah. they get emotional when, when we touch on this. Yeah. When I was talking Is to that some, conflict, though? Remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lead to that. Yeah. So, basically, if you... The, the two words of uh, Afrobeat, right? With it. We could, we, we could connect this. Yeah, without an S. Okay. What, what's Fela? Fela's one is Afrobeat. Afrobeat. No S. No S. S. Okay. So, one of the first joints that me and my brother worked on actually sampled the man who said the two words Afrobeat, Fela. which is Fela. Yeah. We sampled Shakara. And that song is Eyamada hey, now. Da, da. Da, 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 da. At this point, nobody had touched nothing by Fela or Sample. The way us hip hop folks, we would sample James Brown. We did this for Uncle Fela. We had already paid homage, right? Yeah. And the song was a huge hit here in Ghana. At that time, you had uh, the, the TV station, what's that? Uh, Channel, no, not Channel, Channel O? They was bumping the video. I am that now video. Yeah, yeah. That was, was on every rotation. South Africa, but South. they broadcast it to the DST. So folks all over the world. So we really pretty much started a revolution. We sparked it. Okay? Us too. Reggie Rockstone, DJ Rap. We sparked it and they ran with it. Yeah. You know, but we're not trying to claim nothing because we you know we we had already named our joint Hip Life. You know, and then we carried on. That's what gave you all who you know today. So the new school, the new emergence of young folks doing Afrobeat. Think about it. You know, because we were sparring with Two Face, bye bye. We were sparring with, you know, we was we was running around the world. We were running in Africa with the Remedies, the Plantation Boys. We knew them from joints to joints. We yeah. was running with uh, our brothers from. Uh, um, um, where where Jolof come from? <laughs> Senegal. Senegal. Yeah, PBS, uh, positive yeah. black. So what's yeah. up, Playboy? You good? Yeah. Positive so, black. So. so is there a conflict between hip life? It's no conflict. Afrobeats at all. Is there a difference? Yes. That's so, a, there, there's, hip, a, there's a slight difference. Hip life is still the the rap. It's rap. Rap thing. Rap not, already. Not singing this thing and and but. Hip life is also like very distinctive Ghanaian beats. Yes. You know, like with JQ and later. But now, started doing, but, yeah. you know, but new school now, they, now they're rapping over drill beats. You know, yeah, yeah. it has evolved. But the, the original platform, I mean, the original from its inception, um, you know, it was more rap. It's still still rap. What, yeah. So our biggest artists, most of our biggest artists in Ghana are rap. Think yeah. about it. Yeah. You know, so... But you know, it's all goody. So he, that's what he's asking. Or it, or it is essentially the same thing. Afro yeah. beats. Yeah, we all we all get down. 
Yeah, we all got something good. to say. We all get down. Because, so. you know, in, in, in uh, the one that Angola, mm -hmm. Kiduru and all those things, they call yeah, that Afrobeat too. That's a whole, what? Yeah. They call that, that music from there, they call it Afrobeat also. Not the slow one, like the, but the, 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 the so street stuff. They already got a name. Yeah, but I'm saying the Afrobeat oh, is so a very generic, generic term. Yeah, generic yeah. term yeah. We already had our thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, hip life. That's... This is Nigeria didn't have their thing. Yeah. They didn't have like a specific name of any yeah. of the music yeah. since yeah. Yeah. since when? Since well, the know, ethnic had, music. Had juju music. Yeah, the ethnic music. Yeah. Ethnic, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, that's a big month over there. Yeah. So it's a camera. Are there enough Ghanaian artists representing the political and social issues in the music? Like Hell a, like a no. Shayun Kudi, uh, no. for example, name some artists that's talking about politics and social issues. One love the Kubala. One love the one love with myself. Yeah, I, I, I rap a taste. Mensa. Mensa. But see, they're all our people. Yeah. All our people. Oh, yeah. Manifest small. But Chama Kwame, yeah, on the patriotic yeah. front. Yeah. Made in Ghana. But overall, come on now. It's weak. They taking it like the hip life stand. Yeah, Braggadocio, yeah, big, they, big it up my my. Uh, it's weak. We could do some consumer, more. Consumer assets. We could do some more. Yeah. We could do some more. I mean, we got plenty boogie, bumble booty music. Come on, man. We can't just be on that. There's so much going on. What are your What are your thoughts on these big festivals that materialize in Ghana, like like Coachella? I mean, uh, Afrochella and all that. Afrochella, Afro Nation, yeah. um, um, uh, Tina Festival with what's the name? Yeah, that shit is dope. Yeah, it's what that's that's it's dope. Just sum it up like that. Yeah, it's dope. <laughs> it's dope. I, I like it because keep it, keep it coming. It, it, it gets other people to see to yep. investigate what's going on here. And I through pray, Ghana and, and I pray, I, I pray and hope. That you got your business right, where it ain't a bunch of culture vultures controlling and y'all puppets. No, yeah. Control the narrative. That's your story. That's our story. I mean, even the name Afro. Once you start there, I'm good with you. So, you what's your mean? thoughts on what it brings to Ghana? Did we have um, we had Panafest in the '90s. Yes, Panafest. But that was kind of like government control. They didn't yeah. see the bigger vision. Yeah. But when it became private control, like. Um, well, they definitely created the new. This is the new Africa festival and and, and all that stuff. Afrochella, young kids. I mean, what you think? What what you think? Um, I think it brought a lot. It, brought, it, it put Ghana on the map. Employment. Yeah, yeah. You know, kept them busy. Kept kept young folks. Created busy. Tour, slight slight yep. tourism in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Gave other reasons to come. Yeah, you know, as you and yeah. I, we've traveled other places just to go. Be, go yeah, be in the so mix. That's yeah. not, um, go to the Mecca, New York. I need to be in New York. There's something happening there. It's, yeah. it's, it's a gap. Yeah. It's a bridge. It's, it's, it's a beautiful story. I, I love it. All right, y'all. So there you have it. Tactics. And man, I wish I was in Ghana right now. Well, 2021, we do really, really. Pray to the most high <laughs> that we get another opportunity where we can actually physically introduce Reggie Rockstone to a Gokush TV Black Electricity Special.